It's been a while since I posted a video here at Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida, just about two months to be exact. This is my home casino, just about 10 minutes away from where I live. This is where I play all of my hours when I'm not traveling around the country making poker vlogs. Today, we're gonna be playing some 510 No Limit. It's a $25 mandatory straddle under the gun, a $2,500 buy-in, let's Go. I raise 5-4 suited on the button to 75. Small blind, a tough pro, makes the call. I play a lot of pots with this guy on my left throughout this session. We go heads up to 6-7-8, two diamonds. I flop the bottom end of a straight, and now the small blind leads out for a $100 bet. I think we can go both ways here between calling and raising. I think calling is good, keeping all of his bluffs in there on a board that should favor him a little bit more than me being the preflop raiser. Raising could be good to try to get value from two pairs and sets and draws. I like to just call and we get the worst turn card in the deck. Five of diamonds, front door flush gets there. Any nine is a bigger straight than me. This is the problem with not raising your big hands on the flop and the small blind continues now for $225. We could easily be beat here by a bigger straight or a flush but maybe he could still have some bluffs. He can also have some two pairs and sets that we're beating. So I make the call looking to potentially evaluate on the river, depending on what happens. Final card, queen of clubs, doesn't change anything at all. After leading out on the flop and the turn, now my opponent slows down and checks over to me. I don't see too much value in betting on this board, so I check back. He shows a bluff with ace 10 offsuit with the 10 of diamonds. 4-5 is good. First pot going our way. The bankroll rebuild challenge is still in effect. I'll be going over those numbers at the end of this video. Next hand is an interesting one. Under the gun races to 75. There's a call and I've got ace-king offsuit now in the cutoff. I like to get a little tricky in position and just call $75 before my opponent here on the left, same guy from the first hand on the button, Puts in a three bet squeeze to 375 bucks. The straddle now thinks for a little bit of time with around $8,000 in his stack and calls 375. Early position Razor, who raised under the gun, calls 375 as well. And now the hijack player calls 375. Wow, this is a lot of action. And I'm sitting here with Ace King. I do want to kind of explain my thought process of just calling preflop and not three betting with Ace King. One, the raise was from under the gun from a tough pro. Two, there's a couple players at this game that are weaker recreational players who I definitely want to be getting in pots and playing pots against. I'm not a huge fan of isolating pros and then having the other weaker players potentially fold out their cards. I feel like in position with a hand as strong as Ace King, Sometimes flat calling preflop is good when you can play in position against players you may have an edge against. That plan has now gone out the window. Once there's a raise of 375 and three callers, there's just way too much dead money in the pot here to just call this $375 raise. Now, what size could I use as a four bet here? The player on the button only has around $2,200 left. I feel like my only size is all in. So that's what I do, four bet jam, all in, with ace king offsuit, button thinks for not too long and makes the call. Straddle player thinks for a little bit of time and folds. Other players fold and now we are heads up all in with ace king. Over $6,000 in the middle. My opponent asked me once or twice. I just tell him one time and the board runs out good for us. Ace, six, six, nine, seven and ace king is good. Once my opponent takes a while to fold his cards and a big pot is going our direction. I'm assuming my opponent had a hand like tens, jacks, or queens, so we probably got lucky and won a nice flip here. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say about this hand. Let me know down in the comments below. I'm in the game for $3,000. I believe I'm up around three and a half or 4K already with a lot more big hands to come. Next up, hijack opens to 75. Cutoff call 75. Pocket 10s on the button for me. Definitely good enough to put in a raise for value. So I make it $300 to go back over to the hijack player, who's a pretty aggressive professional player. He thinks for a little bit of time and then bumps it up again to $850. Cutoff player folds. Hijack player started the hand with $2,500. 
I think this is a spot where I just kind of have to commit myself. I either have to kind of go with my hand or just fold. And I decide to fold pocket tens here facing this four bet. If I was in a private game with a lot of action or a live stream game, I would probably never fold pocket tens in position versus a four bet. But in these public games facing these Euro pros, I feel like it's actually a fine fold. It's kind of a tough spot given the stack sizes, but I put this hand in there just to kind of illustrate the different styles that I have when I'm playing a live stream and when I'm playing a public game. Now, oddly enough, very next hand I'm in the cutoff with pocket tens again. I raise to 75 and again face another raise. This time the button makes it $225 to go. This is a very easy defend here. Even though I'm out of position, I think it's an easy call given the fact that it's cutoff versus button. Ranges should be wider. I could four bet sometimes. I think calling is fine as well. Heads up here to Jack seven nine rainbow. I flop a gut shot in second pair. I check and the button checks behind. Turn cards and eight of clubs giving me the straight. I double block him from having a straight as well given the fact that we have two tens in our hand. I bet out $150 and he calls. River cards a six and I decide to go with a polarized sizing on this river. Basically saying I have a straight or a bluff. Make it $950. He folds rather quickly and we win. You know when you can tell at the table when a player is getting steamed up and tilted and more and more frustrated? Well, the player to my left definitely is giving off those vibes, and I don't blame him. I mean, he got stacked when I went all in with Ace-King. He had been losing some other pots as well. All the pots he's been playing haven't gone his way, and that leads into this next hand where I'm blind versus blind versus him. I raise queen nine of hearts and he makes the call. Nine, four, four, two clubs on this flop. I think we want to be betting big or checking. I think betting big is good versus his opponent and his potential tilt. So I make it 150 and he calls. Turn cards a seven. Now, if I did have some hands that I had C bet and missed on the turn, I would be checking. So I want to balance that out sometimes with some strong hands as well. So I check to him looking to potentially induce a bluff or for him to bet a worse hand, but unfortunately he checks this one back. River cards a five, so now the board is nine, four, four, seven, five. I feel like as played, I'm just always gonna have the best hand here. And I wanna bet a sizing that he can call with worse hands and also maybe a sizing that can induce him to bluff. So I decided to go $165 and the action's over here on my opponent. After about 15 seconds, my opponent raises to $700. I snap this one off and get shown ace jack offsuit for a complete airball bluff, and I'm pretty happy with the way I played this hand. I felt like I read the situation correctly. And I had a plan going in that I was going to bet small, trying to induce him to raise. He did raise. We called and we won. I was getting pretty bored at the table. I just didn't have many playable hands for the next hour, hour and a half. So I decided to go for a little walk outside where I see this awesome, beautiful, light green Mustang parked right outside the poker room. I haven't really played a significant pot in a couple hours, but that changes when delting king of hearts, king of clubs. There's a raise to 60, call for 60. I three bet to 325 bucks. Only initial raiser makes a call. Easy does it flop with a king eight five rainbow. The nuts top set for us. I bet 225, my opponent calls. Turn card six of spades, now bringing in a flush draw. Not gonna slow down, I bet $700. My opponent calls again in a beautiful river, giving me a full house. It's a five. My opponent's got around $2,000 left. This pot is pretty big. Only one option. That's all in. And unfortunately, he folds. But a nice pot being shipped in our direction. Poker is very rarely easy. But I have to say, so far this session, it's just been very easy. I picked up some hands. I've won some pots called off some bluffs, and we're up around $6,000 so far 
on the day. Moving into the last two hands of the night, ace jack suited for me. There's a raise to 60 by a tight Euro pro from early position. Button calls, I just call in the big blind. Three ways to ace, jack, three, two clubs, top two pair for us. I check, initial raiser checks, button now bets $75. I think multi-way on this board. We just want to put in a raise, try to get value from worse aces, flush draws, straight draws, make it $300 to go. Initial razor folds, but the button makes the call. Pretty bad turn card with the two of clubs. Brings in four or five for a straight, brings in the obvious flush draw. I check and now my opponent on the button bets $300 again. Well, we could be winning, we could be losing. Not really sure what this bet means. So I just call looking to evaluate on the river. I don't improve to a full house, it's a 10 of spades. I check over to my opponent again, and now he fires out a huge bet of $2,100. Well, I'm not really sure what this bet size is. $2,000 plus dollars into a $1,400 pot. I don't think I can call with two pair. I'm losing to sets, straights, flushes. So I reluctantly fold my hand. Given that price, I just don't think I have to call there. And I lose about $1,000. Moving into the next hand, the last hand of the night with ace jack. This time it's offsuit, ace of hearts, jack of clubs. I raised a $60 from early position. I just get one caller from a recreational player who's built up his stack from 2000 all the way up to 12000 This guy's running like God. I flop top pair on a kind of connected board. So I check to him and he checks this one back. Turn card's a six. I check to him again. This time he bets out $100. I'm just going to go into check call mode here. So I make the call. River cards a nine. I check to him for a third time. He bets out 300. The way I played this hand never can fold. So I call and get shown ace 10 for a flopped two pair. Another small loss for me. And I think that is it. Poker had been easy this entire session, but back to back, we lose two medium small pots. I've been playing for hours. I'm tired. I call it a night, rack up my chips, head to the cage and cash out. Alright guys, that is it for this one. Took you guys to the gym, a new gym that I've been going to for the past couple months. It's called Aurora Station, downtown Fort Lauderdale. It's like high intensity circuit training, a little bit different than CrossFit, kind of saves my back and legs a little bit. Went to get some food, went to the hot tub, and now we're back home doing the outro. As for yesterday's session, it wasn't the most exciting, huge pots, crazy hands, like really, really tough spots. I just kind of smooth sailed my way to a $4,700 win. I won a flip with ace king, I caught a couple punts and bluffs, and then I flopped top set with pocket kings and a three bad pot, and ended up winning almost 5k. As for the bankroll rebuild, last time I talked to you guys, which was about eight days ago, I had $26,000 to go to get back to zero. Last week was a good week, I won $6,400, which got me back to $19,600 for the bankroll rebuild challenge. So less than 20K now, I've had an amazing month of March. I've made over $40,000 this month of March, which is so much needed after those crazy, terrible, dark 
months. I lost $60,000. I've got some exciting things coming up next, some announcements coming up in the next video or so, some traveling, some big live streams. I'm excited for that. Please like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, I'll see ya.